In this video, we'll take a look at the topic of drawing Lewis structures for molecules. Please remember that molecule means that we have nonmetallic with nonmetallic elements. We're going to have covalent bonding. So we need to identify nonmetallic elements. We'll use the stair step divider. We know that the elements located above and to the right of the stair steps are nonmetallic. Hydrogen is also present in many molecules because it is a nonmetallic element. Now let's take a look at two different examples of Lewis structures for molecules. First, let's take a look at the example of methane. Methane has a chemical formula CH4. In order to determine the Lewis structure for this, we need to know how many valence electrons does a carbon atom have. Let's use a different color for carbon. Carbon, located right here on the periodic table, has four valence electrons, which I'll draw in like this. One, two, three, four. Now, next we'll take a look at hydrogen. Hydrogen has one valence electron, so we would draw the Lewis structure for hydrogen like this. Now, the total number of valence electrons that we have to work with in this molecule will be four from carbon and one from each hydrogen. There are four of those. So we've got a total of eight valence electrons that we can use to draw a structure of methane, CH4. I'm going to put carbon in the center and draw in its valence electrons, and then we'll add in the hydrogens. One right here with its electron, second one here, third one right here, and fourth one right here. Please note that carbon is now achieving the octet rule. Carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons. This stabilizes the carbon atom. Hydrogen is an exception to the octet rule because it has electrons only in the first energy level. It will only need two electrons in order to be stabilized. Let's look at one other example of a compound where we can draw a Lewis structure for a, mo a molecule. So I've chosen the example Bi3. Now, boron has three valence electrons located right here. So we'll draw those in. One, two, three. Iodine has seven valence electrons. Oops, we've got iodine right here. Iodine has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So the total number of valence electrons that we have to work with for this molecule, three from boron, each iodine has seven. There are three of those, so that gives us a total of 21 from iodines. We have a total of 24 valence electrons in this molecule, 24 valence electrons. And remember that we had eight valence electrons in that molecule of methane. So let's draw the structure for this compound. We'll put the boron in the center, one, two, three valence electrons from boron, and then we'll add in the iodine. And we can see that we can bond one iodine here, a second one right here, a third one right here. We'll draw in the valence electrons for the iodine so that each iodine is meeting the octet rule. Each iodine will wind up with a total of eight valence electrons, seven that it had originally, one additional electron that it gains by sharing in a covalent bond with the boron atom. Please note that in this molecule, boron is an exception to the octet rule. Boron forms just three single covalent bonds, so it winds up with six electrons. This is more stable than boron would be by itself. Uh, also of note here, we have a, we want to talk about covalent bonds. So this is a covalent bond, a single covalent bond. Another one here, another one here, another one here. We have single covalent bonds here, here, and here. The single covalent bonds are when there are a pair of electrons shared between two atoms.